Welcome to another radio video and today we're going to talk about the 40 meter amateur radio band in my little series talking about the different amateur radio bands. Uh, 40 meter amateur radio band is an interesting band. It's pretty much a 24 hours a day band. On the daytime you'll hear local signals up to a hundred few hundred miles away and in the evening and night you'll actually have signals from pretty much all over the world come in on that frequency band. It's one of the popular amateur radio bands and um, it's divided into different little categories that I'll show you. Um, the lower part of the band is CW for uh, the uh, Morse code. There's uh, a little bit of upper side band in the digital modes but um, this band, the voice portion of the band is lower sideband, the uh, signals are mostly in lower sideband here, uh, with a little bit of AM at the top of the band. One of the uh, major problems of this band um, is the fact that the uh, band goes from 7000 to 7300 kilohertz, but from 7200 to 7300 kilohertz you have a shared band with international broadcasters so uh, that part of the band might be a little crowded at times um, interference to international broadcasts are often the case and uh, also ham radio operators often complain of uh, interference from international broadcasters and I've actually seen and heard many amateur radio stations that actually will interfere with the international broadcasters um, intentionally which I don't find really cool and very intelligent but um, that is something I hear quite often so when you tune around from 7000 we start in CW for Mars Gold of course Around 70, 40 kilohertz, 70, 35 to 70, 40, there's often some BPSK31 digital modes. This is W1AW, Morse code uh, station that uh, makes you actually it's like a Morse code practice um, broadcast so if you want to learn your Morse code this is a great great way to do it some radio teletype here around 7070 uh, 7076 is often the spot for uh, some JT65 digital modes here we often have stations actually talking from about 7080 to 71 20 and uh, I think it's mostly Canadian stations that actually talk there depending on the country where you live not all stations are allowed to broadcast on these modes on these frequencies so we'll now tune around for signals in the lower sideband mode Get a bad ice storm there and lose power, but I think you're smart to be uh, uh, down where you are. 
through the storm here on Thursday. In there and, and get some some vivid. Uh, I guess they call it a vivid setting, but I, I customize the, the setting myself. And I, I, I like it for landscapes when there's flowers. I property pointed to a specific city in Europe or in Asia, and you know, back in the day, like you said, you know, it was uh, 100 kilohertz signal or 150 kilohertz signal. The towers, the, the antennas were hung with 400 foot towers. I, I'm told they're all wood. The uh, around seventy two ninety, seventy two ninety five, you often often have AMers. So if you hear a tone, you switch to the AM, AM mode and tune around. Um, I hear quite often AMers on this part of the band. So it goes up to 7300 kilohertz and that's where it ends. And of course the last 100 kilohertz is uh, shared with international broadcast stations so uh, there could be lots of interference. Uh, like I said, propagation at, in the evening and nighttime could be very, very, very long, so it could be uh, good for DXing stations far away. And in the daytime, uh, this band is actually used a lot for local uh, stations. For example, here in southern Quebec, uh, the same gang that I was talking in the 80 meter amateur band of 3765 that talks a lot of technical stuff is on the daytime and the weekends often on 7070 so they have these two frequencies and of course you can hear lots of local amps on that frequency even in the middle of the day so uh, take a uh, listen and uh, tune around it's a very fun amateur band so hope you enjoyed a little series on the different amateur radio bands in the HF shortwave spectrum 73